immune system lives in your blood. People say the immune system is in the gut. That's the total false information. Your immune system is in your blood. Your blood goes to every cell in your body every 60 seconds. That's where all your antibodies are. That's where your immune system lives. If you have blood removed, you're compromising your immune system. So no more than a quarter vial. And if anybody tells you you need to have more blood than that taken out, oh, we need more for the test, that's not true. There's a massive business that sells human blood and does extracts from the blood that goes all over the world. It's a multi-billion dollar business. But nobody gets told about that. One of the things that everyone experiences, I'm sure you have experienced, is from time to time you get bloating in your gut. Some people get bloating all the time. But any bloating is your body alarm telling you that, hey, you're not combining your food properly, number one. Number two, you don't have the proper microbial population in your gut you need to be digesting food efficiently. And a lot of the things that contribute to bloating are things like carbs, eating bread and pasta, not being aware that there's a lot of mold. People blame gluten for their bloating. Well, gluten can definitely tie into, if you're sensitive to gluten, that can be one of the big problems. But it's really the mold factor. All the processed foods have so much mold in them. And even if it's just a small amount, it builds up over your lifetime and it gets worse and worse. People will even get a hard place in their gut that seems to never go away. And the bloat is meaning that you're not digesting your food properly. You're getting unwanted poisonous gases releasing from the wrong food combinations. And the ultimate way to deal with this is to have fiber, whether it's like some kind of leafy greens mixed with fat. That's the first thing that you should be eating. And then just make sure that you're having just the right amount of protein after that. Don't have protein first. You always got to make sure you have fiber and fat going into your tummy initially and then having the protein afterwards. If you're into a carbohydrate diet, well, you're going to be dealing with all kinds of other issues. You're going to be dealing with potential insulin resistance. You're going to be dealing with unfriendly combinations in your gut that's going to be causing gas. And the bloating is obviously from a gas problem because gas is expanding. You know, the food goes into your gut and it ferments and causes this. You don't want that to happen. You want to be digesting the food. You don't want things fermenting in your system. If you're a fruit eater, you want to make sure that you don't have fruit or something like that after you eat hard to digest food. So things like fats and proteins take three to six hours to digest. Fruit will take 20 to 30 minutes to digest in your gut. If you take fruit after you've eaten the heavier, hard to digest food, it sits on top and causes fermentation immediately. And so that's just a wrong combination and a wrong sequence. So you've got to teach yourself to eat food in the right combination at the right time in the right sequence. And that will alleviate much of your bloating. Start a journal and start writing down when you ate something and what you ate, and then monitor your system about how you feel or how your body reacts to that particular combination and you will see a pattern and a trend from your journals that tell you, oh, okay, so that don't do that and definitely do this. And try different combinations. Experiment for yourself because it's your body and you're responsible for it. But that's how you do it. The topic of stress is a very important one and is actually very simple. You have an autonomic nervous system that controls what system you're in. You're either going to be in sympathetic stress, which is very important to be in to get things done during the day, or you're going to be in parasympathetic, which is rest and restore and also digest. When you're in your parasympathetic system, your body is able to digest food properly and able to calmly think about things and get things reset. That allows deeper sleep at night and it helps you keep calm during the day. When you have to get something done and you're under stress to get something done, you're on a project, you've got a lot of brain power, a lot of bandwidth from your brain that is required, you want to be in sympathetic stress. And as soon as you're done in that phase, you want to get out. But what happens is that people get in sympathetic stress and they get locked in there. 
because you have too many things coming at you at once. You look at the world we live in. <laughs> Just the media alone, from email to text messaging, how many apps do you have you're communicating via text? Whether it's WhatsApp or Telegram or Signal or just you know regular SMS or iPhones or iMessage or whatever, you're getting hit from every direction. And people get locked into sympathetic stress, which is extremely unhealthy. You don't get into parasympathetic properly, where you should be most of the time in there. And you're not going to produce proper hormones. You're not going to be able to restore your brain function properly. You're not going to get the deeper sleep. So one of the best ways to kick yourself out of sympathetic stress and put yourself into parasympathetic rest and restore is to lay in your back, get your thighs vertical with some cushions under the bottom of your legs for 30 minutes a day, making sure the blood that is in the expanded blood vessels in your thighs that is robbing your system of the necessary blood to keep the digestive system proper and your brain function proper, it stores in your thighs. Even if you lay down flat, you're going to have too much blood in your thighs for flight or fight. And that's why those blood vessels expand when you're in sympathetic stress, because you got to get moving around. And, you know, you only have to do this for about 14 days. You lay on your back 30 minutes at a time. That resets your system to tell your brain, hey, it's okay, because that forces the blood into your torso and your head. And your body's going, I'm in sympathetic stress. What's all this proper amount of blood doing in my gut, in my head? I don't know. And then your brain eventually goes, oh, I guess it's okay. And then you safely transition into parasympathetic. So just be aware of this. This is the, You can manage your stress totally, mechanically. That's how you mechanically manage it, by simply getting the blood back into your gut and your head. And you will see a big change in your sleep patterns. You're going to have way deeper sleep. If you're measuring your sleep with some kind of a device, you'll see a big change. But it does take 14 days just to choose at some point during the day, 30 minutes, where you can totally chill out. Nobody's bothering you. There's no phone calls. There's nothing playing, no music, no videos, no nothing. You just lay there and drift off into Never Never Land for 30 minutes. And don't do longer than 30 minutes. If you do longer, it's not going to benefit you. And this has been tested thoroughly in clinical trials. When it comes to getting blood work done or getting blood panels, there's a few things you've had to think about immediately. Number one is you do not want anyone to draw more than one quarter of a vial of blood out of your body. When you go get to these blood tests and they start taking, you know, like a pint or multiple vials of blood out of your body, this is not a good idea. It's actually harming you because your immune system lives in your blood. People say the immune system is in the gut. That's the total false information. Your immune system is in your blood. Your blood goes to every cell in your body every 60 seconds. That's where all your antibodies are. That's where your immune system lives. If you have blood removed, you're compromising your immune system. So no more than a quarter of vial. And if anybody tells you you need to have more blood than that taken out, oh, we need more for the test. That's not true. There's a massive business that sells human blood and does extracts from the blood that goes all over the world. It's a multi-billion dollar business, but nobody gets told about that. So a quarter of a vial, you could do 50 blood tests, 50 blood panels from one quarter of a vial. Now, the other thing you got to look at is the person who's giving you the prescription to go and ask for various things in the blood panel. They have to be very sophisticated. They have to know what to ask for, and the lab will just do whatever panel you want. That person who's pulling the blood panel or giving the prescription has got to be very skilled at reading the blood panel correctly so that it is correlating all the information you need. So it can tell you where you're deficient, where you've got overages, and where you want to find equilibrium. So blood panels are great. It's a great measurement tool. But just remember, always push back on these things. Make sure you're finding a good blood analysis, someone who really knows how to do it properly, ask for the right panel, gives the right interpretation of that panel. So just beware, you know, educate yourself about this and take care of your immune system. One of the most important organs in your biological function is your liver. Your liver does multiple different things 
to keep you well and healthy, filtering your blood, making sure you're converting the nutrients that are coming in, specifically fats that are coming into your system you want to be able to digest and utilize well. One of the best ways to damage your liver is to eat very poor quality fat. One of them would be adulterated seed oils, which you'll find in all kinds of health products, all kinds of packaged goods is buried in there. Just read the labels. The most harmful thing you can do for your liver is have very poor quality fat or damaged fats. And where the opposite happens, if you have really good quality fat, your body then can clean itself out. Your liver gets clean. You don't get a fatty liver from eating good fats. You get a fatty liver from poor quality fats and also having carbohydrates that are not good for your liver. So you're either going to have a body that uses sugar, glucose for fuel, or you're going to have a body that uses fat for fuel. The very best is to have fat for fuel. If you're a glucose type person who uses glucose for fuel, you really can't have any fat because the fat is getting in the way of the insulin delivering the glucose into the cells. By far the superior way is to go with a fat for fuel lifestyle. And that keeps your liver totally cleaned up. If you have a plugged up liver, you're going to find all kinds of weird things happening with your skin. Now, if you're a person who has a body that is highly unique, like about 20% of the population, no matter what they eat or do or drink, they still have beautiful skin. That's only 20% of the population. Those people never know that there's a problem because they just don't get a skin problem. If you're a sensitive person and you have skin blemishes, acne, whatever shows up, liver spots as you get older, then you know that you're a very sensitive person and that's the alarms that go off. So it lets you know, hey, you got to eat some good stuff. So make sure you're bringing in really healthy fats, which are saturated fats. And you got to have the right ratio. You know, if you're on a carnivore diet, for example, and you're eating more protein than your body wants, as soon as you go over the amount of protein your body really needs, that protein converts to glucose. And then you're back to a glucose burner. And that causes liver issues. So you just want to have everything in perfect equilibrium, the right amount of fat up front, right amount of protein and support your liver health just doing that something that simple and there are other means of detoxing the liver using milk thistle one of the best things i've ever seen is milk thistle seed oil and when you have milk thistle seed oil consumed on a daily basis it goes in as like a prophylactic which means that it's coating the liver with beneficial fat that does not allow the contamination of your liver and you only take half a teaspoon a day and it has to be unadulterated milk thistle seed oil. This is a protector of your liver. Now, people who drink alcohol, you know, if you're drinking any alcohol at all, you're going to be damaging your liver because alcohol is straight up carbs. It does all kinds of damage to the cells in your body, especially your brain. But it hits your liver first because your liver has to fix all this stuff before it kills you. And that's what slowly turns the liver into a very poor functioning organ. So just make sure you're not spiking anything like insulin where your body's not able to accommodate these overages that you don't need. So if you're having skin problems, that's a pretty big alarm system going off that tells you there's something wrong with your liver. It is not the external things you can put on your skin to alleviate acne or they're in the market and they work. That's just a masking. You want to have beauty from the inside out, health from the inside out and it shows up in your skin. You have beautiful glowing skin and you don't have any acne problems at all when your liver is working properly. There's something that's been around forever. And, you know, it's one of these things that is like a, like a master key. And, but people have never heard of it. There are a very tiny percentage of the population that's heard of this. It's called mewing. And there are experts out there who know exactly how to do this. So look it up. Mewing is where you let your tongue sit at the top of your roof of your mouth. You don't have to put huge pressure. It's just a matter of positioning your tongue. It will bring your facial structure to the right form. It does all kinds of adjustments. You're literally self-adjusting the structure of your skull and your jaw and your teeth. So all the bone structure that is into the jaw that the teeth are embedded into, they can get very crowded. 
Mewing is a very slow process. You do it every single day and you do it as often as you can. You can do it anywhere you are. And you just simply put pressure with your tongue into the top of the roof of your mouth up towards the back of your front teeth. And it seems like something that would be, does it work? Well, people have proven that it works really very well. So just check it out. Just look up mewing online. Find the people who have the most advanced information on it and use it. Do it every single day. You'll notice a profound change in your structure for your teeth health, your jaw relationship, and your facial structure. And you start to look better and better because the wider things get down here, the better. And if you're a mouth breather, slept in your stomach or something like that, and your skull has been altered, you can actually repair that. What I find interesting is a lot of people in life do not think a lot about the brain in the head where you do all of your thinking. Now, you have a brain in your heart and a brain in your gut, which through the neurological pathways is all connected. But in the head brain, if you're not getting the right nutrition in your body and you're not making sure that you got the toxins out of your system, it can cause what people call inflammation. Now, inflammation is sort of a broad word that people use that you should really define more clearly. The better definition of inflammation is called congestion. Just think about your body. It's got 30 trillion cells in it. You've got a massive amount of cells in your brain, and you want to make sure that the cells in your brain are working at their optimal because your brain is really running the show. It's monitoring everything that's happening in your body. And if you're congesting your brain, the receptor sites in your brain get filled up with toxic garbage. Well, you're going to be breathing, and that's one big problem because you're breathing all these nanoparticulates that you don't want to have in your system. But there's ways of keeping it clean. So when you eat clean nutrients that are easy to assimilate, that are brain food, like a natural nootropic. But the best one I've ever found in my lifetime is marine phytoplankton. And it keeps the brain clear from all this congestion because it's a brain nutrient that gets right to the blood-brain barrier. It's a micro and nanonutrient. These nutritional molecules are so tiny, they go everywhere. And your brain loves it. So if you want to have a super sharp brain where your cognitive abilities are much better, your ability to receive information, catalog it, store it properly, and remember it when you need it, this is the best way to go. If you're eating foods that are toxic, you're going to be hammering your brain because you don't want to have unhealthy fats in your diet. You want to make sure that you're having something that can allow your body to detox so you keep your receptor sites clean and then you fill those receptor sites with these nano and micronutrients from this marine phytoplankton nutrient. It is something that comes from the ocean. It's the most powerful nootropic on earth. And nootropics came on the scene 15 years ago as a super popular thing, and they've been trending more and more. But what you want is natural nootropics that are from nature in their original form, and that's what your body loves. You want the whole orchestra of all the nutritional molecules playing to your system. And all I do all day long is just add it to water and drink it. And it gives my body the fuel and my brain the fuel particularly to make sure that there's no contamination, no inflammation, which is actually congestion, but rather the opposite of that, which is giving it the nutritional energy that is needed for your brain to function. So you want to have clean, highly beneficial rich nutrition going into your system. And that's what allows your brain to work amazingly well. No more brain fog, way better sleep patterns, way better restoration, and an improvement of your brain power. 